Yes, I'm aware it's not Christmas anymore, but it's still the Christmas holidays. I'm still in the Christmas spirit with a touch of Grinch soul. Cause today, today, we're gonna talk about some shitty books. Hi guys, I'm Francesca and welcome back to my channel. This is the last day of the year and I wanted to end it on a positive note. So I thought, why not make the video about the worst books that I read this year? You know how on the last day of the year you have to throw away all the bad old things to prepare for the new year? That's what we're going to do today. So buckle up and be ready because there are going to be some quite unpopular opinions in this video. I can already see the subscriber count go down and down, but I don't care because these are my opinions and I'm entitled to them and I'm not gonna change my mind, so. I'm gonna go in the order in which I read these books. So coming up at number one, we have Belzar by Meg Wolitzer. This book, this book is about a girl who lost her boyfriend with whom she'd been together for 41 days and I would like to stress that, 41 days, and she has lost any interests towards life. She is detached, she is depressed, she doesn't want to do anything, she doesn't feel anything anymore and her parents of course are worried for her so they decide to send her to an institute for troubled teens because of course when your daughter is depressed you send her away to a faraway institute where she doesn't know anybody, where she will be forced to do things, where she'll be away from her family, that's the way to go. But anyways, they sent her to this institute which is kind of a boarding school and she's selected with other four or five students to be a part of this exclusive English class where the professor gives them a notebook where they have to write their feelings, their thoughts, whatever they want, she's not gonna read these notebooks. Our main protagonist, whose name I don't remember, I think it was Jem, maybe? Let's call her Jem. Jem realizes that when she writes in this notebook, she's kind of transported to another world where her boyfriend is still alive and she can get to spend some time with him. And the same happens to the other kids, not with her boyfriend, of course. Each one of these students will spend time in this other world where the problem that they are suffering for hasn't happened. Why didn't I like this book? There are many reasons, but I'll give you just two. The first reason is that there are some YA tropes that I just cannot stand. For instance, she is at this institute because she is still suffering from the death of her boyfriend. Let me rectify, she's still suffering from not having her boyfriend anymore. That's better. But, of course, after a few weeks, she falls for this brooding guy with a hood, mysterious, who has problems and such, you know how it is, the YA kind of guy. And you do not fall for someone else if you're depressed because your boyfriend is not with you anymore. That's not realistic and it is a very shallow way to deal with grief with a kind of grief. The second reason, I don't want to get into spoilers, that's why I'm trying to choose my words carefully. The second reason is that the author was extremely disrespectful towards some delicate issues that just, it pissed me off so much. And I will read to you a sentence from this book in a scene that just sealed the deal for me. Like when I got to that scene, I closed the book, I put it down and I threw it away. Well, I didn't throw it away, I gave it away, but still. This is an observation that Jem, our main protagonist, makes regarding DJ, who is her, let's call her best friend. She says, she thinks, I wish I could binge out on food like DJ did, 
going over the pile on her bed and taking comfort from some tasteless old granola bars and a long drink of ketchup. But I know that none of it would help. Now, binge eating is an issue, okay? It's a very serious and complicated eating disorder. And the way in which she refers to it, that just pisses me off. Because it's not just the act of binge eating, but there's so much more that goes along with it. And you saying or thinking that thought, that is just so wrong and so disrespectful towards all those people who suffer or have suffered from that eating disorder that I just cannot take it. And also she handled a coming out of a lesbian character in such a light way that I, no, no, no. And there was so much more like the whole Belzar other world thing was just so ridiculous. And our main protagonist, she compared her problem to other problems that were just so worse and so much more serious. And I just, that was, this book was just a huge no. Which surprised me because Meg Wolitzer wrote some literary fiction as well. So you would expect more from her in any possible way imaginable. But no, just no. My second worst book of 2018 is... Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Again, I can feel the subscriber count go down and down and down. Why didn't I like this book? This book, first of all, it was so slow and it dragged on so much. Like there were a lot of episodes and aspects of the life of the main protagonist that I couldn't care less about, that weren't all that relevant to the story and that could have just been cut out without compromising anything. So this book needed to undergo some serious heavy editing and that obviously didn't happen. But also I feel like the author really wanted to do a collection of essays and she settled on a fiction book, perhaps to reach more readers. I am totally on board for books that make you think about racism and that deal with that and that discuss it in depth. But just the, the tone of it, the tone in which it was done, the kind of conversation that the main protagonist was having, it was like she was a teacher in a classroom and she was just teaching you things. And it just didn't feel like you were reading a novel. It felt like she was trying to do something, but she failed at it. And that was the result, I guess. Does that make sense? And again, there's so much more, but the last thing I wanna say here is that the main protagonist was so annoying and unlikable and incoherent. I know that that's not a deal breaker. Like there are books with unlikable main characters that you can still enjoy because they are well written, because there's a character study or whatever. But in this case, I think that the unlikableness of the character was compromising the story itself and the message that the author wanted to give to her readers. Because for instance, this book is about racism, right? It's true that people cannot understand what it means and what it feels like to be black, what African-American people have to go through on a daily basis. Like we, and I mean white privileged people in general, we cannot understand what they go through. For instance, there was a scene in the book where Ifemelu, the main protagonist, was going on a trip of some sort with her boyfriend and her boyfriend was a white guy and she had forgotten her silk pillow and she did not want to tell him because she didn't want him to think that she was spoiled because she had forgotten her silk pillow but she needed that pillow for her hair but she did not want to tell him. So how did she expect him to understand an aspect of an African-American woman's life 
if she wasn't willing to share that knowledge with him because that knowledge was not something that he had ever come across in his life. So it was understandable that he didn't know that, but it was not her job, but, but she could have just told him, because of my hair, I need a silk pillow. And that would have been it. He would have understood, but she did not even make the effort to tell him what she needed. So how can you expect things to change if you don't tell him? And perhaps again, I'm saying this from a white privileged position, so I don't know how it feels like to say something like that to someone, but still, I just, I don't think there would have been anything wrong with explaining to him how it works for her. Like, that would have been the normal thing to do, I guess. And yeah, just, that's enough for this book. Next is Vox by Christina Dolcher. This is an adult dystopian false feminist book that is set in a world in the near future where the president of the United States is acting like a dictator. Who knows where she got that idea from? Women basically have to wear a word counter. They can only say 100 words every day. And our main protagonist, she is a neuroscientist. I think she was a neuroscientist who was working on a cure for the Wernicke disease. One day, the president's brother gets into an accident and gets this disease. Therefore, our main protagonist is called by the government to work in a team to find the cure and her word counter is removed and so on and so forth. She has to find a solution, she has to fix the dystopian aspect of this world, whatever. The reason why I hated this book so much, well, there are many reasons, but once again, I, I need to keep this short, I'm so sorry. The main reason why I hated this book so much is that, as I said in the beginning of my description of this book, it pretends to be feminist, but it really isn't because it is all about women have lost their voice in this society, in this dystopian society, and they have to fight to claim it back and they should be treated with more respect. But at the same time, this book offered a very specific image of how a woman should be in order to be a woman. For instance, if you want to be a woman, you have to speak out loud. If you want to be a woman, you have to dress in a certain way. You cannot wear a buttoned up t-shirt, for instance, because that means that you're trying to hide yourself because you're subjected to a man. <laughs> Which is such bullshit. That is just some bullshit right there. I'm a woman, no matter how I speak, no matter how I dress, no matter what I do, I'm still a woman, capital W, woman, okay? And this book was so radical, you know? It was just screaming at you that you have to be a part of society, that you have to vote, that you have to protest, that you have to run for office or whatever. And again, that's some bullshit. Sure, you have the right to vote and it's also your duty to, you know, vote. But they don't have to be that much involved in politics. And once again, the incoherence comes back because the main protagonist, I don't remember her name and I don't even want to, the main protagonist wasn't involved in politics and throughout the whole book, she feels guilty because she wasn't because that behavior, her disinterest was what caused the society, the dystopian society thing to happen. But at the end of the book, when all is fixed, of course, because what else could have happened? She kind of runs away to another country and also she runs away from politics. So, and of course, all women are innocent and pure and saints while all men are pigs and aggressive and violent and idiotic, all of them, but the main protagonist lover, because of course, he's a gem, he's a precious treasure, of course. Let's just say that this author was trying to milk on the Me Too movement, which, girl, seriously, that's just wrong. Next is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. The time has come for me to acknowledge that 
Neil Gaiman and I, we're not pals. We don't work well together. I don't like his writing style. I don't like his stories. They always feel all over the place and things just happen without a reason. There's no explanation whatsoever. No rules whenever he uses magic. It's just, even in this book, nothing was explained. Things just happened. What kind of magic? What kind of power? How did it work? Who knows? It doesn't matter, right? As long as there's magic, I guess. I just, I, I don't, I, no, no, just, no, not for me. And last but not least, there's Life Before Us by Romain Guéry. I talked about this book as I did for Vox and as I did for The Ocean at the End of the Lane. My problem with this book was that nothing happened. It was narrated from the perspective of a seven, eight year old boy, I think. And he talked about his life. He is the son of a prostitute and he lives with a woman who takes care of a bunch of children that are, you know, sons of prostitutes, literally. He tells a bunch of episodes from his life and about his relationship with this woman that is taking care of him. I didn't care. Nothing was important. It dragged on. He was so vulgar and rude and the book was racist and there was this scene that just sealed the deal for me where a man told to this boy that there was this particular sexual act that it was okay if it was done to women because of course women but it couldn't be done to men because that wouldn't have been manly enough which, dude, screw you, okay? Just screw you. So these were the worst books that I read in 2018. There were other books that I didn't like, but these were the worst of the worst to me. I hope you'll still be here after this video. But yes, these are my opinions and I stand by them. So I think that this will be the last video of the year. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being a part of my life. Thank you so much for being a part of my booktube journey and for making it so incredible and just great and awesome. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what are the worst books that you read in 2018 or the worst book that you read in 2018. I would love to know so that I know what books I should stay away from, <laughs> what books I should avoid. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next year. Warm hugs.